All right, everybody. Well, let me see what's going on here now. Uh, I think I'm live. I'm not really sure anymore. This is really sucks. I got to tell you. Seems like I'm live on everybody's page but my own. I do not know why. Let me see. You are live and you are live. And. Uh, <laughs> James McGuff is alive. You know, James, I don't know what's going on, buddy. Hey, Danny. Hey, Freddie. Yeah, well, back up again. I And I, I got it on Fred Schultz, uh, but I don't see it on Flagpole Productions unless it's going through. Because remember a few weeks ago when I had problems, Dan Bakke jumped yeah. on it and he ran it somehow. Katrina Lester. Hey, Katrina, how are you doing? Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know what's going on, Danny. So it seems like uh, all traffic is redirected to Dan Bakke's site. It is. And what I did on this time is I took and I put it uh, on Fred Schultz's site. Katrina Lester, thank you. Yeah, all good, my friend. Yeah, um, yeah, see, people are starting to jump in now. I can't figure out. Uh, if it's on Flagpole, hey, Petrina, are you watching it on Fred Schultz's page or on Flagpole Productions? Because, you know, I got to tell you, Danny, ever since Facebook took and knocked that off on the 22nd of October or of, of uh, April, everything has been screwed up. Yeah, I know. It, it, it has been. I, I've seen it. Um, kind of hard to see how they've done that. I don't know how it got redirected to Dan's site. You know what I mean? And then kept well, that way it, a temporary thing is one thing but for it to always go to his side it's uh i don't know maybe give I, him to a shout. I totally agree but you know it's way past my uh and sean mcnary hey sean what's going on buddy you know, we're trying to figure out uh everybody that's watching right now we're trying to figure out how this thing got uh redirected um no idea you just popped up and i thought wow yes it's tuesday and, I, and i'm up you know, Petrina's over in England. So, you know, it's like uh, late 30 over there. And let's see, mine mine says Fred Schultz page. See, it's coming up on Fred Schultz page. Paul Farrell's watching. Um, yeah, it's coming up on my page somehow instead of on Flagpole Productions. Man, I wish I could help you. I know there's a lot of intelligent people out there. I mean, I, I cannot, I have no clue how to do anything with this stuff, you know? Yeah, I'm so, not one of them, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I can't, I don't know. Yeah, Sean McNary said that's what he got too. You know, Sean, what we don't understand is a few weeks ago, um, Facebook cut off all third-party things, they said. So why, I don't know why. Um, but anyhow, I'll make a long story short. So I tried to, James Stevens is watching. What's going on, James? Uh, the spikester. Uh, but anyhow, you know, I don't understand uh, why it's not on flagpole, but I can pull it up on my regular page. It, the only thing I can think of was when Dan Bakke jumped in to give me a hand, he redirected it through his stuff. Sent to me this time was at least. Yeah, you know, Ryan, we can't figure it out what's going on. You know, like I said, uh, Bakke helped me a few weeks ago when Facebook cut everything off. And so next thing you know, um, I go to jump on. I, I got to go through his page. And I cannot figure out. See, that's just uh, unreal. Devin Schwartz, what's going on, Devin? Well, we're getting a lot of people watching tonight that, that are different viewers, Danny. So, you know, I think it's because it's running through the Fred Schultz page. And through instead of through flagpole productions, why I do not have a clue because up here it says flagpole productions, but I think that was uh redirected through Dan Bakke and Daniel Massey's watching. What's going on, Daniel? How you doing, my friend? So, you got a lot uh, of people viewing it, which is good. People know how to get to the site, it's just that it's redirected and you can't get control of it, you know, back control of it again. Right? What's going on, Kenny? Kenny Chavis watching another band member. That's a good guy, yeah. Yeah, he's a real guy. good guy. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you know that uh, um, 
Gio, uh, Diagidio, uh, <laughs> Giovanni, you know, he uh, yeah. is part, he's a band member now. Well, I'm glad he, you put him as a band member because he's a most certainly a Hollywood movie star now since he's done that commercial with the uh, uh, vitamins. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Man, brother, I'm sitting watching TV and all of a sudden I see him I, and his voice. You never forget it. I don't care where he's at, man. You know his voice, right? I told Rod I'd be son of a bitch at steel. So, yeah. And the guy knocked <laughs> it out of the park, too. He did a great job on that commercial. Yeah, but, yeah, um, he really did. Yeah, he's a good yep. guy. And I saw uh, Rodney now is on there. Ryan Squires. Remember him? Yeah, you yeah. remember him. Yeah, he's doing it now, too. So oh, on, wanna... on Fruits and Vegetables? Yeah. If you want to run like Rodney, then eat those fruits and vegetables. Oh, but, I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah, both of them. He did a great job, too. Both of those guys. They uh, they knocked it out of the park. So paintballers were made to get in front of a camera, I think. Wow, that's very cool. At least these couple of guys were. Yeah, you know what's good about that, though, Danny? Remember years ago when we took them, we brought outside entities into the sport of paintball? You know, that's what really makes paintball grow is is the outside people coming in and, and, and helping us promote the sport instead of the people in the sport keep promoting each other, you know. 100%. And, and, yeah, and I think that's really a, a good thing. I, I do. I agree with you. And to see them on a positive note, like vitamins and, and nutrients like that, I think that's a really good plus opposed to sitting there on an alcohol commercial. You know, I mean, it, it moves the sport in a positive direction. You know, you want your kids uh, healthy and stuff like that. And so it's, it just it does a positive thing for paintball. And uh, it's real good to see it spread out like that. It's like you said, instead of all of us self-promoting, it's nice to see outside industry people coming in to our industry and promoting our sport. Yeah, it's that, it's a big thing. It really, really is. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, not change the subject, but is that some sad news about Jessica Cortez or what? It's really sad. And yeah, it's really I, sad. You know, Danny, I woke up this morning and I seen that, you know, and and definitely my prayers go out to her husband, Mark, and, and everybody. But I got to tell you, that just blew me away when I seen that. I could not even believe that. You know, it's hard, you know, you, you know, I don't want to get into this over the over show, but, you know, you, you sit there and you think of all the good people. There's so many, you know, jerks out there. Not good people. people. There you go. And, and, and uh, you know, they're still walking, you know what I mean, with no problem. And then you get such great people, people that are willing to help other people, to sacrifice their own for, for the help and, and betterment of other people. And they're gone early. And so you kind of wonder, man, you know, it really, it really irritates me when you have a, uh, an outstanding individual like that passes too too soon. You know what I mean? A, no, I, ab I absolutely agree. I got to send yeah. Kevin the, the link again here. Where you at, Kevin? I, I sent him link. Everybody, what happened was uh, we've had kind of a small problem here, as I've had for the past few weeks. You know, I can't believe it, what's going on. I just need to get a computer guy that really knows what's going on here. And uh, maybe get this thing straightened out a little bit. Because it's definitely past me. Here we go, Kevin. Okay. Paste. And send. Okay. Okay, I just sent Kevin the link again. Yeah, uh, everybody at see, I see James. He should be able to go to Fred's personal page. Yeah, you know, Ryan, we can't figure out why it's not going back on on uh, Flagpole Productions because that's what it should be on. That's what all my stuff has always been on, man. It's, uh, uh, Jose, thank you so much, man. Very cool. Can you read that, Danny? Danny, can you hear me? Hello, Danny, I can't hear you. Wow, I can't hear Danny now. How about you, Kevin? Can you hear me? I can hear you perfect. Okay. Have Danny log out and log back in. Danny. It's funny, Freddie. I was watching you, and then all of a sudden you went blank again on, on the internet. Really? Yeah. Are you you got people you got people in the chat? Uh, yeah, yeah. We got nine jumped up now. Um, oh, now everybody's gone. 
Wow. You know, guys, I got to apologize for this. You know, this is something that I, I really hear Kevin's back again. This is something that I really enjoy doing every week. You know, getting to talk to you people out there, seeing that I can't drive over to your house or hang out with you all the time like that, getting to sit and talk with you and watch your comments and everything coming up on the screen every week. That meant an awful lot to me, you know, and then the like the 22nd of last month, why Facebook went and shut everything off? I don't know. And then Daniel Baki, which is a great kid, you know, he jumped in and re he rerouted stuff for me. And uh, why it got rerouted and I can't get it to work again. Here, Danny's back now. Hey, Danny. Can you hear hey, man. Sorry about that, guys. Somehow we got connected. Oh, I don't. Yeah, Keith Kills said, I don't think you're on StreamYard anymore because it doesn't come up on StreamYard. It's got to come up on StreamYard. It's the only thing I put it out on. But usually stream car, StreamYard goes through, you know, it'll pick up my page. Let's see. Brian Courtney, next week, Fred, put me in the green room and give me admin rights and I can help. Right on. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan, you have got it. Ryan, you want to jump on with us tonight? <laughs> yeah, now. I mean, I, I know you can't do anything right now, but you want to jump on? I'll send you an invite. Let me send it to him anyhow. Let me see. Ryan Courtney. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, we're going to talk about my tournament. This is like the last chance I'm really going to have. I know that. And, you know, I got to apologize. I just. Uh... It's all right, Freddie. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It sucks. It does suck, but, you know. <laughs> so how's things looking at the field what's there, up, Catch? What's up, Jose? Jose, can you hear me? Hey, Cut. Yo. What's going on, what's going on with go. the field? How's the uh, field look? It's getting there. It's getting there? Good. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are still looking forward to that, you know. You know, well, I don't have that many teams. I think I got eleven, but I gotta, I gotta see what I got nailed down out of the eleven so far. I think dude, there's two or three that are saying they're coming, but I haven't heard from them yet. So I'll be uh, fine if I have twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The yeah, the All Americans are one of them. Yeah, they called me the other day. Doyle called me the other day. Special was asking him. But the problem is, is that you got the week before our tournament in New York, you have a tournament in New Hampshire. And then you have the ICPL in Texas. That's the problem with all of this stuff. You know, there's uh, everybody piles on top of each other all the time, you know, and it makes yeah. it uh, it makes it pretty rough. And Devin was asking what the dates were for the New York Classic this year. It's the 8th through the 11th. I, I, I'd have to look at the calendar. I'm pretty sure. I think it's the 8th through the 11th of June. Yeah, absolutely. See, Kevin. Yeah, Boyd that's changed. finally got yeah, Chris Ralph finally fixed that on P, on PB leagues, so the right the right dates are up on PB leagues. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, you know, I got one coming up too up in Northern California, the Southern California one down at SC Village. Uh, you know, that would have been a good one, but first of all, we got flooded out, and I had a small. Heart problem I was dealing with at the time, so it made it kind of rough for me all the way around. Hey, so look, as long as everybody's ready, I don't care if I have big numbers. I just want people to have a good time, you know? Oh, I'm not looking for big numbers, you know? You know, it, be honest with you, you know, 10 teams is a very comfortable thing. Well, 10 teams would be a nine, you know, would be a 10 team yeah. round robin. 11 teams would be an 11 team round robin, you know? Yeah, and you know, that's that's good. Look at Danny. Danny just had. Danny just had his down there, and shit, everybody came away happy as hell. Yeah, Danny, how many did you have at yours? Ten. So you had everybody played nine games? Yeah, they played a lot of ball. They had a great time. It was man's ball. There was no problems, no concerns, and everybody walked out having a great time. It's, it's so ten, easy. Ten, ten, happy pe ten happy teams. Yeah. 100 people, 100 people yeah. walked out of there happy as hell. Plus the people right. that came to watch. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, you know, you can ask for whatever you want, you know, you know, the bigger it is, the more out of control you are, the less time you have playing. 
and you know something if you really and we are um for the player so that's perfect numbers for us because we really want to do a perfect show each and every time for these guys so you well, know, I, I like it. I like it because I actually, when I have less teams, you know, when I have that ten team, <laughs> eleven team, it's yeah. so easy to interact with everybody. Right. You know, instead of like running around putting fires out all day, you know, all weekend long. You know, but I'm more comfortable, and everybody has a better time. Yeah, yeah, it's just chill, you know. And there's a lot of people that come to these events that want to talk to me, and I, I never get a chance to even say hello. You know, when I had the one up here in Northern California last year. There was eight teams, and you had to see it. You know, on the field, they were trying to kick each other's butt. But well, I was the, there. I was playing. Yeah. Off the field, everybody was – they were just so happy with each other, man. No. You know, this is the one up at Shooters that I had up at Shooters. I was, there. I was there. I had a great time. It was – you know, I like that, you know, where you can actually just – everybody was just hanging together. You know, it was just great. It was but just not a just good hanging together. Day. They were helping each other and – you know, it, it was just, uh, it was like the old days. You know, I, I kind of brought back a lot of memories from when I had certain teams that we used to hang with back in the old days, and we'd all get together and just have a great time. You know, on the field, you don't know the guy. You just want to pound him in the ground. But, you know, you right. get off the field, it's a different ball game then, you know. Well, kinda... even, even the discrepancies. Let's just say you have a discrepancy on the field. And the smaller teams, the smaller amount of teams, you could, they, they don't really fight. They talk it out. Okay. Yeah. That's because right. they don't have a large audience. Well, that's no, because you have guys that got all these people around them. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna do this, this, and that. You know what I mean? So it's way better off to have a smaller group of people, and you know, in control. Ed, you know, got me and Gene watching us. Hey, he's hey a good guy. Oh, wait, what's that? What's that look like? Uh, huh? Autocockerparts.com, Mr. Mean Gene. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he's a good he guy. Not uh, he's a great guy. You know, yeah. he's a kick in the pants. Actually, is what he is. Uh, you know, he's my kind of guy. You know, you you, you 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 know, either you like me or you don't like me. You know, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, there's nothing anybody can ever do about it, and it's been that way my whole life. You know, you don't like me, one less Christmas card. That's just how it works. Big deal. Right on. You know, but you know, the, the people that that like you, those are the people I put time in with. Those are the people I do anything for. You know, and uh, yeah, Jennifer Montressor's watching. Hey, Jen. Hey, Jen. She's a nice lady. What a sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah. I hope Frank's doing good because, boy, I got to tell you, Jennifer, I feel for him now. All the stuff I've gone through in the past few weeks. And then today, you know, losing, uh, you know, Jessica Cortez. It, it just woke up and that just blew me away. You know, I mean, I was tripping when Aaron Carter passed a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. You know, but, you know, I never, ever expected Jessica to pass away. That just, uh, that just blew me away. Matt Jones is watching. He says, hey, Danny. Hey, man, how you doing? He's not a great guy. Man, you got great people on the show, Freddie. Oh, let me tell you. Hey, yeah. On the screen and off the screen. You know, um, it just... Uh, like I say, I pick and choose my friends. I'm I'm happy to everybody. I, you know, try to be nice to everybody. Excuse me, but uh, you know, some people just don't warrant it. You know, and if I think you're good for the sport, I'll push you all the way. You know, I'll make you as popular as I can um, because I want the sport to grow. Because obviously, you know, with all the damn health problems everybody's having, um, it's sad. And, and here, this guy here. What's going on, Joe? Man, you yeah. heard Joe West died. You know, this happened uh, a few months ago, and uh, Joe West was on his tractor. He went and did some work for his mother in law, and I guess he was coming back, and a car hit him. So, um, you know, that's just uh, a sad, Ooh, sad thing. We're losing a lot. We're losing a lot of good OGs. Yeah. You know, the people, just like, you know, and I didn't mention my my shout-outs at the beginning of this show the first time ever. And the reason I mention these people is because, you know, they just meant so much to paintball. And if you go back to the beginning of paintball, paintball was very, very hard to get off the ground. You know, these kids nowadays, you know, I love them, but they don't see the trials and tribulations that we actually had to go through back in the day. 
to make paintball keep growing because the minute anybody's seen you holding a, a gun or or talking about yeah, I shot my buddy, they went ballistic. I mean, they, they would go crazy. So, you know, I, I mention every week, Tim Schloss, you know, uh, great, great guy, Tiger Stripe Pama, Dan and John Colby, you yeah. know, I mean, I got Danny on here, Bud Orr, Tom K, Rainy yeah. Juvie Boucher, Jerry Danny, Braun, ooh. Randy Camilla, Randy, Ross, yeah. Ross Alexander, Gino Ross. from Belkin, Jim Lively, you know, all of these guys back in the day, and, and you know, Danny will tell you, you know, because Danny... Danny got in real early and, you know, I got in real early and a lot of it is thanks to Danny and Ross Alexander. And, uh, you know, I could go on and name the people that, that actually made Fred Schultz and Randy Camilla. These all, these guys all really just kind of. Hey, Zach. Yeah. 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 Zach's a cool guy. But, you know, and we got Mark Gong watching. Mark, bye. And Kathy watching. Oh, Kathy, you made it. Who else? Yeah. Oh, we got, uh, let me see, Mark. Chris Rangel. What oh, is going Chris, on, Chris? Chris? How you doing, my hey, friend? Chris. Texas. Is one of the hardest people to contact in paintball. Yeah, yeah. Veteran yeah. militia, right? Oh, he, oh, Chris. oh man. I didn't yeah, know. He, go ahead, Danny. Hey, I didn't know he was trying to reach out, man. Of course, I'd always I would absolute respect for that man. I'd always call him back, man. I got nothing but mad respect for him. I, I look, I don't do that messenger shit, so I gotta I gotta go in there and look. Cause I know I got a lot of messages I gotta go look at. I shit. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, yep. Well now you know. Yeah, man. You know I, mean? I mean you don't answer my phone all the time either. So it's a big deal. You know, what's a big deal? The guys you know busy. answer each other's phones most of the time. Yeah, well, you know. But if we you're talk. busy, you're busy, but we we talk, you know. Yeah. We talk. We know how to get a hold of each other. You know, we're men, we're not women. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Talk you talk can't tell my eye that though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sorry right. about everybody. My eye keeps <laughs> draining on me here. <laughs> you know, so you know, I gotta tell you, um playing the Ponderosa, which is one of the fields you've got up there in New York. That is, you know, I get a golf cart every year when I go there. But they won't let me take it on the field. But you know, yeah. I don't know if there, I don't know if there's enough power in that cart to go from one side to the other. Well, we're not. If the event stays small, I'm not even going to bother with golf carts because I'll be able to just take cars up there. You know. There you go. Well, I don't. Yeah. When I don't have to deal with 200 cars. It's no problem, and I'm probably not going to use Hudson. I haven't decided yet, but I think I'm just going to use Rabbit Run and Ponderosa. But I'm oh, thinking wow, about having be great. Here. I'm thinking about having this might because this might be the last event ever here. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a I Survived the Ponderosa t-shirt. So, Oh, wow. Very they'll cool. be available to the people that are at the event, you know. So That's one of the things that these people don't understand, younger kids, man. I mean, if you take a look, there's a lot of paintball uh, fields out in the country, okay? Now, you can't go to all of them. So you have to pick out a couple that you really want to try. And the one that always stuck in the back of my mind was your field. I mean, that's when I was growing up in the paintball and, you know, trying to find new fields. I've always heard about that. And the one that, that, that struck in my mind was the Ponderosa. So there was, there was it. So that was on my bucket list. I was so Back happy to make New York when I went there to play. And it's everything that I thought it was going to be. It's a bad oh, yeah. You know, I feel like a bitch when I was in my 20s, you yeah. know? Yeah, but you I know what? Feel the, the bitch when we were kids. Yeah, the Ponderosa fun, nowadays, yeah. though, is not like it was. See, oh, no. if you remember, it's much smaller. It's much smaller now. It used to go down the valley, and then, you know, now it goes sideways, but it used to go the other way, and it used to be a 45 minute game. We played 15 men on that team. On no that kidding. Team. You used to have to go up and over the hill and then down the bottom of the hill. Oh, man. Yeah. Down in the valley and then back up. And the flag stations were on the high side of the whole field. Yeah, and if you, if you look, if you watch that original ESPN show, the first ever pa televised paintball thing that we did yeah. way back with the Piranhas, uh, Lords of Discipline, and us. Yep. I mean, that was that field. We played it on that field. So if you've seen that ESPN show that – Way back with those orange fucking helmets and jumpsuits, and we were shooting Pearl Mutters that that gun that that pump gun that cheap ass pump gun he had the, the tracer. 
trash. Yeah. That's a oh man, done, man. Yeah, you know, I gotta tell I gotta tell you though, you know, promoter, you, you can say a lot about the guy, but you know, he's actually the one that introduced me to Danny. He's because, a great guy. Yeah, he took he, that guy made sure that everybody made money. Exactly you know, right. Not, the thing was, everybody hated him because he policed the industry. The thing was, he guaranteed if you buy your stuff at PMI, he's going to guarantee you X amount of points for your money. Yeah. And oh, business, yeah and he, was, he was a great businessman. He was a but good you guy. But remember that back then, if you weren't a PMI team, you didn't win tournaments, man. There was no fucking way. Yeah, <laughs> I, was I was sponsored by the M. And he calls me up and he goes, yeah, he says, I got a new semi. It was a VM68, you know, uh -huh. I mean. That thing weighed like 800 pounds. Uh, but anyhow, he goes, uh, and he says, uh, Fred, he says, I got a, a guy that's got a new air system. And I go, well, what kind of CO2? And he goes, no, 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 it's compressed air. And he goes, I want to send you this 68, and I want to send you compressed air system. And I, I told him, I said, well, Jeff, how am I supposed to fill this thing, man? And he goes, go get yourself the scuba tank, and I'll send you the, um, the yeah, thing, the, the, the adapter. So he did it. So then we take and I go up to Oregon and I play a tournament up there. Right. And it was cold up there that day. And, you know, everybody was just pissed because I'm standing there. The balls are bouncing up to me and I'm just whacking these people with the any system, you know. So anyhow, so we go up and we win the tournament and I come back home and I says, I have got to talk to this guy about this system. So I called Danny up and then I flew to Chicago and. And Danny and I met for the first time. That was another story. And uh, then anyhow, you know, Danny and I kind of linked up because we were both street kids, you know, and it just uh, kind of fell together. And, man, I got to tell you, I I've pushed, had a great time I pushed Aaron since, Mark to forever. Oh, we had some times, Danny. Oh, yeah, we did, man. Yeah, like... some, some we could talk about and some that we can remember. Yeah, so, I, don't, you know? I don't remember any of those, though. <laughs> Here we go. It was a different and, time. Yeah, yeah. Sam, Sam Moyers, the VM68, did weigh 800 pounds. Yeah, you know, I the ran with mine for a while. You know, nowadays I'd have to have wheels on the front of it, but you know. Used to talk. <laughs> Especially when you were running the CO2 where you had the 20-ounce tank on the back and the 7-ounce tank in the front. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I've know, got, I got one. I have, a, I have a couple of those still because me and Howdy worked with Sheridan to produce that gun. Oh, because Sheridan really? sold, yeah, Sheridan sold the VM sixty eight, and Pearl Mutter had the PMI three. That's what he called it, the, the version that he had, that camo version. You know, right. Jeff. You know, like I say, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff gets a lot of heat, no doubt. But I remember it being one of uh, Lively's tournaments, and he shows up and he, he calls me over there. He goes, "Freddie, check out this brief ca briefcase." I go, what's that? And I go over there, and he's got twenty five grand in the briefcase, yeah. and that was going to be that was going to be the prize money. So you know, not, you don't uh, really see that a bunch anymore. <laughs> hey, Jeff, did a lot for this industry. You know what I mean? Uh, and and when you're in that position, I mean, you you're taking all the hits. You know what I mean? Anything that comes, and he absorbed them all too. Jeff was not. Jeff Jeff never backed. That, that guy was a fucking pit bull man he never backed down from nothing from no one oh, I, yeah when i went to his when i went down to his uh factory he takes uh -huh. me in the back and he had the baddest tripod 50 caliber machine gun you could ever imagine and he would take it out and actually cut a car in half with it i think the bullets were like at that time were like three and a half or four and a half bucks a piece or something like that oh he was he he had some cool shit i mean the stuff he had all the cool stuff. I mean, from cars, from the Cobras to to the, to the guns, from the yeah, he had he had it all, man. He, had well, he was making bank, man. He was making big fucking money at one point. Well, yeah, you know what got him going was the paint. That's yeah, what really, that's what really got him fired up was the paint. You know, when I first met Jeff, there was two people in that warehouse. It was Jeff and another guy, and there was like three skids of paint in an open warehouse. That was it. So yep. when I picked up my case of paint, which lasted me like a month, because it was the 62 caliber. So yeah. it, oh, yeah, it was 2,500 rounds in a box, I think it was. Well, yeah, well, you know, a case yeah. of paint lasted you a fucking month back then. Well, yeah, it's because you paid a buck and a half for it. It was 150 why. bucks <laughs> a no, case. You were buying the cases, you weren't shooting shit. Like, I can remember playing games at, like, Skirmish, where, you know, I pulled the flag, and I think I fired two balls the whole damn game, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, something in pinball did ex- you know, it was exciting back then, you know, because you yeah. tracked the guy and you shot him. But man, I have to tell you something. I, I my attention span is about the size of a flea, right? So I really am impressed that I really did all that fucking shit back then because it was boring, boring as hell. Am I glad? Whoa, RJ, hang I mean, on, dude. RJ, where the hell have you been, man? Fucker, you got some of my people. gun. There's like eighteen. <laughs> There's, there was 18. There's like 17 people watching here. So, yeah, but RJ, I haven't heard from him in years. I like to, you know, this is a lot. I'm getting some new names on this. You know, no everybody shit. that's watching right now, you know, the, the thing is, I've always showed this on Flagpole Productions, real quick story. And, and uh, last month, for some reason, Facebook cut off all the, uh, the links between StreamYard and Flagpole. So I got a, a friend of mine, Daniel Baki. He took and rerouted it through his page. And for some reason, I still do not have it back on flagpole. I'm going to work on it this week and, and see what's going on here. But, man, I got to tell you, it's been an interesting way back here. And Joe man, PMI, RP Share. That's right. Made in that's USA right. back in the day. Right is rain. And, you know, that's what catapulted uh, uh, Jeff up. Was that you know Jeff well, got Jeff, a hold Jeff of was, Jeff was responsible for the first water-based ball. That's correct. That's he what I mean. Got oil. He got yep. us away from oil, and he did that with what was his name? Paul Tournier. Paul Tournier. Yeah. yeah. RP you know, Sheer. RP Sheer. And Paul was a nice guy because you know RP Sheer was my sponsor back then, and when I they would travel, I would travel three weekends out of the month for big games. People would fly me in to do big games, and. Paul Tournay, they would always take and bring out a, a semi truck full of RP Shiro. Yeah. Wherever I, I mean, it was so different. And, and Dennis Miller, remember Dennis? Of course. You know, yeah. And, you know, Dennis would come out there with them too. And Paul Tournay traveled over to Europe and stuff with us. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Jeff, uh, when he contacted me and, and uh, asked me, he goes, you know, he said, I'd like you to uh, be part of RP Shiro. I'd like you to shoot our paint. And uh, I can't remember if I was shooting Nelson at the time or what the hell I was shooting. Nelson oh, shoot. or Bullseye, because well, because our here originally you could it was all PMI paint. Correct, but you know Bullseye, and I I liked uh, I got I can't remember his name. George his name? George Statler. George, yeah, yeah, he was a great guy. Georgie you know, Statler. Yeah, I mean he was an paint, awesome guy. He was an awesome guy. You know his paint was not awesome. <laughs> but, but it was pretty good, I'll tell you. Yeah, we shot it, but I, I went right to the factory any. to get it because the factory was in Long Beach. It was right here in New York. Yeah, that could be because we never got any good bullseye paint. You know, if oh. you were if you were looking to shoot somebody around the corner, you could get that paint because that's the <laughs> book. I mean, like you couldn't believe. <laughs> so, but you know that the RP share we got it and it just shot straight as an arrow. So, what's this say here? Editors deleted all of my comments. Now, why Who would did? that be? Hey, I RJ, we have no admins. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know who would be doing left, that. RJ, you, could, you put shit up, it should be up. Freddie's just not posting them, probably. I got I got him right here. Yeah, oh, Kiko. Kiko, what up? Kiko bugs me every day. He's my How's buddy. he doing? I saw I saw the picture you put up of him sleeping, going back home from. Uh, he, he does that everywhere. You know, I'll, I'll pick him. I'll pick him up in town here. I'm not three blocks down the road talking to him. He's over there at sawn logs. I, I go, buddy, <laughs> we're in town. At least stay awake in town, you know. But you know, I got to tell you, I, now that we've mentioned his name, the guy does an awful lot for me. Period. He uh, well, have him fix your goddamn system so that you're, you know, he you does. Can... He does everything but that. Oh, you need Freddie? <laughs> he, he's calling be... me right now. <laughs> oh, Kiko. Yeah, Kiko. You got two different things going on here. Yeah, I know it. Uh, yeah, two different screens. Not one of them's uh, Streamyard though. Yeah, it's on Streamyard because that's the only way it can go out. Well, I can't contact you on StreamYard, and I was always on StreamYard. Yeah, we set that up so you couldn't contact me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, they won't do it. Every time I do it, it cuts me off. Yeah, that's that's what somebody else just said, too. 
I yeah, don't know what to say. You have two different threads and two different styles yeah. going on here. Well, it is what it is. But, you know, we got people watching, new people, and I love them. I think it's great as heck. And I got yeah, Cheryl Lullis yeah. watching. She's one of my favorite girls. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. When they make comments, it goes to one or the other. Yeah. Well, I'm getting I'm getting some on this one. So, I don't know, buddy. <laughs> Anyhow, you know. go back to sleep. Out. Yeah. All right. That's Kiko, man. He does. Uh, he's like my right-hand man out here. He, uh he does a lot for me. He's a good guy. But, you know, we got people watching, you know, and he's right. Hey, why this does not go out on flagpole like it did before? I don't know, Danny. Well, you got a lot of new new names on, you know, new new people watching, oh. like RJ, Joke Man. I haven't seen these guys before, you know, some of them. It's great. Welcome, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. yes. more than welcome. I know well. them all, but. More than yeah, welcome. I just a selfie again. That's RJ. What's he saying? I can't read that little shit. So he He's said, going. "Thanks for giving me a shout out. I got a kick out of it. I'm still here, but still collecting and preserving the history." Yeah, now, well, you got a good guy. History, so. You know, Ralphie. Ralphie did the. He was with uh, Bailey in the first museum. Ralph has a museum in New York. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you should get him on the show one time and talk to him, Freddie. He's got a lot of good shit. He's got some of my shit still. I gave Ralph, I, I, Ralph, when I get this thing straightened out, would you like to come on the show? Answer me. Please answer me. No, he will. <laughs> you know, Danny, um, you know, we're talking about the New York tournament coming up. But, you know, I got to tell you, the feedback that we got from your tournament, first of all, your field is excellent. Let me start right there. I didn't get to play it this year, but I played it last year. And people said it was better than last year. And I don't see how it could have got better. But knowing you, I guess it did. Um, <laughs> but, you know, everybody was so happy with the way everything rolled down there. You know? Yeah, thanks. Uh, we tried. We got some really good people coming out. You know, we were pretty lucky. You know, everything depends on the player, too. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we got a great base of players, uh, which made the games go by a lot better. Um you know, we try to maintenance the fields and make sure that everything is in place for the players. So it just all turned out pretty good. I'm glad they had a good time. And, uh, you know, we're shooting for more events throughout the year. So stay in tune, you know, or let them stay in tune with you so you can tell them what time it is, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, well, I got to tell you, it depends what platform they're watching me on now. I, You know, hopefully by next week I'll have this worked out. I'm going to get somebody that, that knows computers. And can jump in and straighten us well, out. I have the same problem, you know. I mean, I can't, I can't for some reason get access to the to the Facebook page for the WCPL or the website. You know, I, I, own, the, get, I own the website. I bought it, but I can't. I can't for. I can't get. I've been trying. They're asking for a password. I don't have. So I got to hit up either Rico or Steve Davidson. Somebody changed something, so I don't have access anymore. So I can't, you know, I can post. I can post. But I can't give any admin authority to the other guys that want to maintain these sites. You know, I don't have the time to do it. You know, like Andy Sturette, he wants to maintain the site, and so does Steve Preskill. Right. They want to post it. Yeah, and, and I, I took an them admin authority. So I bought it from Rico because Rico, it was about ready to expire. And so I told Rico, I said, Well, we can't let it expire. I said, I can't run it, but I'll buy it. Yeah, you, you bought the domain name. I bought the domain name. That's correct. Yeah, and I pay for all I pay for all the web hosting. So it's like we're we're up and running. I just can't get access to be able to pass off some admin responsibilities to other people than me. You know, Basically, I'm not, I can't not sit running. there and do this. I can't maintain a fucking social media platform. Oh, me neither. You know? No. No. Um, no, my. So that's I'm, why there's been nothing my, up there. My ability, I would have, I would have flagpole on this right now if I had a good ability. But let's see what uh, RJ says. I could, but I'm not in it for the limelight. Well, we don't care about the limelight. No, you know, we're not in it for the limelight either, RJ. You know, we're in, we're in to promote paintball. Limelight. And, and a lot of people, you know, especially if you have stuff like Kevin says that you have, a lot of people are interested in stuff like that. They really, really are. You know, got a great and, collection. Yeah. And, and even the stories, you know, just like some of the stories we talk about on here, 
you know, I've learned a lot of stuff since I started doing this. And hell, I go back to 84 in paintball, you know, and, and well, I got to go well, over with everybody. Well, first time Freddie on here that I know of. So he doesn't know, you know, that this is old school shit and he fits right in with this group. Yeah. So, so you know, I, yeah, RJ, I'd love to have you on. And, and yeah, I'm going to throw you the invite out. Um, you get a chance, go ahead and friend me on Facebook and we'll see if we can't put this together. But, you know, I got to tell you, you know, um, let's see. Steve is your admin. Reach out to him. Yeah. Well, you know what? I don't know what happened to Steve other than he got a job. And yeah. things kind of kind of fell off after that, Jennifer. Well, I, I hit him up like when this first like a couple of weeks ago when I was first trying to get in. And I was like, are you alive? And he's like, yeah, not for paintball. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, so he's got, a, he's got a bug in his ass again. We need to find we just need to find some. If anybody's out there that would be interested in helping us. With this, well, we Cheryl, have, Ellis, Cheryl Ellis was interested. Steve Presco wants to do it. Andy wants to do it. You know, so there's a lot of people out there that want to do it. I just can't give anybody any authority. So, you know, they would have to make the post, send it to me, and then I would have to post it. That's just a pain in the balls. Well, no, we could take and make somebody the admin for it. Right, but I can't do that right now because I don't know what this goddamn password is so that I can, you know what right. it is? It lets me go in and I can assign the admin and okay. I can assign the responsibilities. But then it says to me, enter the password that authorizes it, me to do it. And I put in my old password and it doesn't work. So I'm locked out. I'm locked well, out of the shit that we let, built. Let me, get a hold of, let me get a hold of Rico because, you know, Rico was going to let it go, you know, because, you know, he, and I told him, I said, no, 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 no. Let me, let me buy the domain name. And uh, I said, we got somebody to run it. And that would have been Steve. But then obviously that's out the door. I mean, I'm sure Steve has a has a, a password that he just has to pass on to us, so, you know. Well, I'm going to ask Rico. I can change it back to my original password, well, or Rico. to another Rico. pad. Devin Schwartz, the, the password is admin. It probably is something fucking stupid like that. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, really. Wow. What no, if Steve Davidson put a password and it's going to be something you're never going to find. No, no, absolutely right. Yeah, that's you know, because Davidson so Danny, was. Danny, what's going on now? Uh, you talk about you're going to do some other events down there on your field. Yeah, yeah, we um, we're trying to work with a few different fields right now, trying to get something together and just put a southern type of uh, um, uh, uh, event out there. And we haven't come up with any dates or anything like that. It's still in the infancy stage, you know. So. You know, uh, we're pretty light on our feet. We've talked to a few people, so I think we're going to be able to get this thing together pretty quick. So so that's kind of what we had an idea of, you know. So and there's a lot of ball. I mean, it's hot out there in Florida, man. But if you're a Florida guy, you got to still play paintball. And heat don't bother you. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of, you know, I don't want to run a summer without any, you know, any paintball, any really good game. So there's nothing too big going on at that point. So we're going to try to slip in between the cracks and get some games in there. That's all. Well, I, that's I, I know your, your field's a great field. Really, really is. And uh, people pl that played it again this last year said it was even better than the year before. And I thought the year before it was great. So thanks. You know, we try, we try hard, but it's off to the player. He did a good job. You know, same, same way with Kevin, you know, at, at any of the tournaments, I never hear people bitching about the air. You know, it's just, you know, an air is such a big thing. It it seems like a small thing, but man, if you haven't got air at your tournament, you know, or, or at least 4,000 pounds, people are all over that, man. Yeah, it's it's something. I mean, you, you know, it's funny. People it's something. <laughs> pop, you know, priorities, you know what I mean? And when you're a field owner, there's a lot of things you could buy, you know, for 30,000 bucks, you know what I mean? So people think about all kinds of things. The last thing they think about is a good compressor. And if they had to do all over again, they would invest into a good compressor. And then they would get the stuff little by little as, as time goes on. But, uh, yeah, you're right, Freddie. People don't think about the air. And that's what's going to make or break your tournament or your event or whatever have you. Yeah, absolutely right. 
Hey, and you're good at it. I I know you're back there switching tanks and everything, making sure that the air stays up constant in it. So it's um, a it's a it's literally a, a job. Once you get it on track, it's like any other thing. But it you have to have your mind in the game because if you turn off the wrong valve, you open up the wrong one. It's six. You know, I mean, we're running six thousand pound tanks. So yeah. that's 6,000 pounds, okay? So you don't want to make any mistakes. So you want to stay on top of the situation. You want to, you know, know what you're doing. So it's not as easy as just throwing a bunch of tanks together, you know, uh, piggyback them together and turn on the valve, and that's it. <laughs> you know, no, it's no. more than that. A lot more to it. Yeah. You know, and not to change the subject real quick, but um, my buddy, James Howdy McGulf, McGuffug, I blow the last name every time, but I know McGuffin. him already. Yeah. McGuffin. Tomorrow's his birthday, everybody. Yeah. Happy birthday, yep. Howdy. Yep. Yeah. Howdy's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, my, my my wife's birthday is on Friday. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So, we had Jerry, Jerry Vaughn's birthday was Sunday. Who's is? Jerry was Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday, yeah. 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 I wish him a happy birthday. 80, 83 years old. I know it. Still tough as nails, so. though. Yeah, still a pain in the ass. Well, I, I thought tough as nail was politically correct. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know. Very. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, is he going to be around when you do the tournament this year? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Man, um, I gotta tell you, you two you guys, I, you guys are on show. You know that. I know you're gonna watch me fight with Jerry. Yeah, that's a show. You know, I mean, last time I was here, I, I was looking for tickets to sell because you guys were going. It was so cool. Well, like a, they're it's like amazing. an old married couple, Steve Danny. Da Steve Davidson and him. And no, Jerry. Jerry. Yeah. Oh. oh no, Davidson and him were fine. Then yeah, I could. I, then I would have paid money to see. So I, I guess they they chill that out, huh? Yeah, no, yeah. Jerry, that, that Jerry was all fun last time. Jerry, last Jerry and Kevin, those are the ones to watch. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're they're like an old married couple <laughs> that don't like each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta love it. What the hell, you know? Well, they've been together for a million years. You know what I mean? Forty and, years. Yeah, forty yeah. years. Over forty yeah. years. Yeah, over 40. Yeah, you 42 it. years. It was 42 years. No, 41 years April. Shit. Yeah, because it started in 88, didn't it? No, it started. I mean, uh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry started in 82. Yeah, but I mean the tournament circuit that he started. Oh and no, that, we were we were we we had air pistol opens in 86, 87, 88. 89, we, went, 89 we became the World Cup. That's it. 89, yeah. 90. Yeah, we ran, we ran a bunch of tournaments. We ran NSG events. Yep. You know, Absolutely I mean, it's the, right. oldest, the oldest field in the world. You know, so it's, you know, we were running, we ran original NSG events. Yeah, absolutely. That's you know, that's like. Danny, when when did you link up to to start Air America? What year? You remember back that far? No, I actually I, I really don't. I think I I got thrown out of the room right into uh, Air America. I think, but uh, I don't remember the date. It was it was because um, I remember like not, the 90s, right? Maybe like 1990, maybe. Oh, I think it, it might be 90. We were in paintball. No, because because we've 88. 88, 89 was Constant Air first coming out. 87, I think I got, it was like 87 or early 88, I got my first 14 ounce, CGA, 14 ounce CGA, you know, bottom mounted on the, on the, on my termite, Constant Air. So that was like 87, 88. 89, we were like, that's when the, I think it was like 89 or 9, or 89. You know who would know? Uh, Kenny Stewart. I think the 68 specials came out, which were like the first production semis that the that I remember, the Tipman. Tipman, yeah, Tipman, yep. You yeah, know, I think, I think and it was 90 when we put out the uh, the first Air Citizens. I think it was. Yeah, because 
because you started coming out like you 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 were working on it. I think like in '90 because I think that's when we met John Dale, like '90 90 or '91, and the auto mags were just coming out. But and we they were the expansion chambers before we did the the compressed air. Yeah, you did. You did exactly the expansion right. chambers, you know, so right? Air America at the time, but we were also master. We were back and master the game. You know, we were mixed up on names. We weren't. We weren't a solid name at that point yet. You know what I mean? Right. We had Air America, so we were putting them on the expansion chambers, and we kind of briefly went into. Then we went into the air. But yeah. I'm just yeah. trying. I'm just thinking off the top of my head when I remembered seeing this stuff, because you know I had the stores at the time, so I was always, you know, I was keeping up with all the innovation. You know, like I was working with Aaron Carter, buying his stuff as he was making. I was buying Bud's, you know, commandos and his ammo boxes and. You know, the, all of the line SI, like quick changes when they were first coming out. And yep. you know, I, I had all that shit, you know. Um, you know, I remember all that crap as it was coming out because that's what I kind of stayed on top of, you know. Yeah, but that was what made paintball so cool. It was the innovative ideas. You know what I mean? And, you know, each year you knew you were come up, people were going to come up with something really cool and clever and unique. You know, and that's exactly what was, cool. was really cool is that being that I got in so early, it was like, and I kind of got into the business indirectly, even though, you know, I was running a team, uh -huh. but it was like, I met all the innovators as they were innovating, you know, yep. like, right. like, like Tom and Thompson would, would be like, I go to California and hang out with like Russell Maynard and I'd go down to San Diego and see Colin and he'd be like, look at this. And I was like, what's that? He's like, I think I'm going to call it the gray ghost. You know, like that's yeah. how early in my basement, I think I've got prototype gray ghosts and spirits that Colin Thompson gave me these prototype parts to look at, you know, yeah. like when the icon Z came out and the mega Z, you know, they, they came to, you know, they came to my store and I, I have prototype Z's, you know, I have prototype six packs. I got so much prototype shit. Well, that's, you know, it's the same thing with uh, Glenn Palmer up here. You know, when I first met Glenn, he was working on stuff in his garage. You know, and I'd go up Everybody every week. Everybody was. Yeah. And then next thing you know, boom, paintball started catching on and into the factory he went. And But you're absolutely right, you know. And we came in, um, I'll say at the golden, you know, I think Howdy was saying, telling me one time, that was like the golden age of paintball. It right? was. When, when things weren't perfect, but we all were connected with people making stuff and, and promoting, yep. you know, my big thing was promoting, you know, uh, that's why I linked up with Dan. I promoted air America. I promoted anything that, that I thought was a good product. I never ever promoted a garbage product period. Well, so, I did because it's everything, everything I started did. out as garbage. So yeah, when really. you got you know, 90% of the products, when you first got them, the first time you ever saw them, nothing really worked. Except Everything for my shit. Except for my no, shit. well, you you, yeah. you you took a long time, but you know, I got involved with a lot of this shit when it was before it was even being marketed to people. You oh, know, yeah. was, I just cool. got but stuff. I, I got stuff that never hit the market. Yeah, but so the thing do I. Was, you, know, but, you know, I can remember them giving me shit and going here, Donaldson, try and break this. You know, yeah, like, it was important. It was so important to know Kevin Donaldson's and shit back then because as as um as a manufacturer. I mean, all your testing is going to come out positive, or the people around you is always positive. And well, it was positive it was with me as Howdy. Like Kevin Donaldson or somebody else like Fred Schultz to go through it, you know, pick it up, make sure it's aesthetically properly, make sure it's working properly, make sure everything's proper. You know, and we can't, you know, so it was really, really important for you to do what you did, what Freddie did, what he did. Because you need Yeah, we were field testing, testing like everything for everybody. But it was Howdy. Howdy was really super technical, you know, like Howdy, Howdy was was good. You know, Howdy worked for Hills Brothers Coffee and I had he had a machinist and they had a full blown machine shop. So Howdy would tweak shit on the job. Oh, you know, Howdy, like Howdy's make quite an individual, yeah. Yeah, Howdy's a smart motherfucker. He's, yeah, you know, how about the Howdy bolt? Yeah, yeah when we man. came out with that thing, that was the first velocity adjustable bolt for a yeah. Nelson-based gun. We put them in everything. You know, we put them in, 
you know, and Aaron Carter, we allowed Aaron Carter to use that bolt and all his Carter guns. He used it forever. We just, you know, it was no pay me a royalty. It was like Aaron, Aaron calls up, asks us if we can put it in his gun. And how do you say to me, hey, Aaron wants to put it in the gun. What do you think? I said, fine, fuck it. Let him use it. You know? Yeah, but there was the attitude of the, of the paintballer back then. It was it was for the betterment of that sport. So right. if you had something you came up with, you said, well, listen, I want a fucking royalty. It wasn't about that, man. It was about, no. yeah, I'll help you. You know, and then, you know, or if you run into a problem, you could call Tom K. T- run yeah. about Tom K. He didn't care what gun it was. Tom K would keep it close to the chest. He'd give you an honest answer, but or you but would do the same. Yeah. You know, so and it wasn't about royalties. It wasn't about what are you going to do for me. It wasn't about any of that. It was about but the betterment know, of the sport. Back and we in could the, help each other grow. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, there there was that <clears throat> we were at the amateur open, and you had Tom K. Bud Orr and Denny Tipman all sitting in the same motel room, swapping you know swapping ideas on on, on different things for the markers. And never cared if the other guy took it and used it as long as it made it better. They were a different I just, breed. I'm I was telling just going to talk about that, Freddie. I was just going to say that. I could remember every year we'd go to the Masters and the board meetings on the bridge. Yeah, I was there. All right. Where all of us would, everybody who was anybody would be on that bridge. Board talking meeting. about what the fuck they're doing, right? And 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 bouncing shit off each other. And what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? Those board meetings back in the day were pretty good. Some. Yeah, the board meetings yeah. were one thing, but I think what it is is that everybody got together because of the player. They wanted to make sure whatever part that was made was safe for the player. So it, it went through everybody. You didn't think for one second Bud or myself or any Tom K could make a part that nobody else dissected and went through and made sure it was safe. Because that's what it was about back then, right? Yeah. So so yeah. everybody everybody watched out for each other, you know, and everybody made sure that the parts that they made was safe for the player. It's not I'm like sure. they're kicking out shit today, man. It's left and right. Plants injector molding. Pins are not fucking stable. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things that are proper. Uh, you know, but you're talking about, let's say, going back in the back in the day when things were smaller, more under control, and everything was set out. And you know, we, for instance, had a lifetime warranty. You can't put lifetime warranties on stuff anymore today. Well, I mean, no. you, yeah, you, you yeah. could, but these kids, it's it's a these kids are like a disposable thing today. Kids play with stuff, and they'll literally throw it away. I've had people come to me at our our shop, and they uh, garbage guys. And I'm like, oh, you see, we get them scrap money for it, but uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing what people will do. But you know, back in the day, you know, these guys weren't worried about the their piece of pie. You're, you're absolutely right, Danny. They were worried about having the best product that they could have out there. You know, and that's the problem nowadays. You know, with the cutthroat and stuff that goes on, it, they don't understand if everybody would work together, the pie would be so big that their piece would be huge. But they don't. People nowadays just for some reason don't look at it that way. They just want their piece of pie and could give a damn about the guy next to it. You know, it's, well, it's, 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 day, it was totally different. It was totally, totally different back yeah. in the day. Yeah, hey, look, we all, we all started in the business, do. you know, to make enough money to be able to play. None of us got into the business to get rich. You know, you got in the business because you didn't want to pay to play. Kind of offset your cost of playing paintball. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it was that that was you know, that's why I, you know, me and Howdy started those, you know, action sports outfitters. It was just so that we wouldn't have to pay two hundred dollars every time we wanted to play paintball. You know, yeah. so you came up with a product or you opened a store. I mean, when we started action sports outfitters, I started that fucking business in the trunk of my 1977 Lincoln Town Car. You know, there you go. And, and then went into the basement of Wartenberg's house, you know, that he rented from my father. And then we moved it into retail stores and on fields, you know, and we got big. But I mean, you started the business. Every product you, you need was in the trunk of my Lincoln Continental. There you go. You well, hey, how do you think Nike started? You know, yeah, Nike but- started the guy with a waffle iron in a station wagon going around making tennis shoes with a damn waffle iron. That's how Nike started. Yeah, no, we went to actually, I went from my Lincoln Town Car 
which was, you know, massive, you know, so I had the back seat in the trunk full of shit yeah. to a van. John Varelli, another one of our partners, he had a camouflaged van. So we moved all the shit into the van. When we outgrew the van, we moved it to a basement. When we outgrew the basement, I moved it into a retail store. We had a huge store in New York. And then I had two locations on fields, pro shops, you know, so three, actually. One in Long Island, one in Hackensack, New Jersey, one in, uh, in Newburgh at Jerry's Field. And then we had the main store in Pearl River. Well, you know, that's like Gino. In the trunk of my fucking Lincoln. That's like Gino. You know, everybody thinks Gino started with a ton of stuff. Gino started by collecting the tubes that guys would use out in the field and throw down. He'd bring them home. He'd clean them. He bought himself a case of paint. He'd fill the 10 round tubes and resell them. That's how Gino started. Yeah. Did you know that? You know, people don't know that. Everything Gino was born with a gazillion dollars. You know, well, he worked up to the so gazillion Gino's dollars. His father had, you know, owned a strip he mall the, in South he, Jersey. Yeah, the pizza joint. He had the restaurant, but you know, he didn't have anything to do with the paintball thing. You know, no, Gino. Well, I remember when Gino, when I first heard about Gino opening. I took me. I took a ride down there to go check it out. It was the back of a pizzeria, and I turned around and went home like, ah, don't got to worry about this guy in my territory, you know. <laughs> and he turned out to be like huge. Yeah, he ended up linking up with Rick Fairbanks. Yep, and, and, I remember you know, that. Yep. yep. So, yeah, I got to tell you, you know, you could sit in the, the history. I think is just nothing short of fantastic that has been for paintball. And you just wish the kids nowadays could really understand how these OGs really worked hard to make the sport what it is today. You know, I, I'm not so sure that, you know, the majority even give a shit. They don't. That's the, See, that's the problem, though. No, you know, I'll, 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 I'll tell you something that, you know, when I got back into paintball a few years ago, I'm out at the field, right? And I'm talking to this kid and I go... Yeah, I said, Bud Orr put that together. And the guy looks at me and goes, who's Bud Orr? You know, and I just stood there. I didn't even know what to say. I'm like, oh, my God, nobody knew who Bud Orr was. Nobody knew who Tim Schloss was. You know, hey, Danny was still up and running. But, you know, just nobody knew who these guys were. And it just floored me. You know, and that's why at the beginning of my show, I got to mention these guys. And since I started doing that years ago, now kids talk about these guys. They go, oh, yeah, I checked online and seen him do this. And, oh, yeah, how's this guy doing? And so on and so forth. But it just blew me away, you know, because back in the day, now you can go out and you can spit and find a paintball field or a store or something. Back in the day, man, they were very few and far between. Yeah. And we opened when we opened Action Sports Outfitters in 1989. There was like nothing, you know. I could remember when I got when I the first store I ever went to was in probably 1986 or 87, and it was Keith Idema's store in Poughkeepsie, New York. Yep, Idema Combat Systems. And when I went into that store, it was like an army surplus store with one little six foot display case, and in that case, it had a PMI, it had, I'm, I'm sorry, it had a PGP, a Nell Spot, a Splatmaster, three tubes of paint, and four CO2s, and it's, and UVEX goggles. That was the entire paintball department. That was all you could buy. <laughs> Keith yeah, but, <laughs> but no, there, nobody knew of anything other than that. I mean, there was nothing. Ooh, just, just think about that. Yeah. That, that four or five things in a display case was the a biggest big thing was the biggest paintball department in fucking New York. It was a oh. big thing. Absolutely right. A PGP, a fucking what, splat master, a Nell spot, three tubes of oil based paint and 12 gram CO2 cartridges. That was friggin' and you and you goggles, shop goggles in the box. That was a paintball department. Yeah, and people all and they also opened up retail stores to sell those stuff. Okay. So which was really funny if you take a look, because we opened up a retail store. There was nothing. And you said you had you you had UVX goggles, Woodstock face masks, PGP, maybe a piranha, 007, couple tubes, and that was it. Okay, that so was in it. order to draw people into your store, we put in skulls, you know, the rubber skulls and shit like that. Yeah. People would come by and 
point their fingers at the store and go, what the hell is this place? We had to draw them in. People didn't even know what paintball was. You try to say paintball, paint, like painting a car, painting a wall. No, no, no. You don't get it. You don't get it. So yep. they didn't even know. So yeah, it was it was amazing back there. And then the, the amount of money, the 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 heart and soul that was put into this sport from the people that started this industry, from the the retail stores, they put their heart and soul, every dime they had invested into their money, they put into a retail store to help the consumer. And That's and it. and they did that and they, they did a great job. They helped all the do you know how well because all the, the, the retailers were all basically paintball players that just were on subsidized or stuff like That's you talked it. about earlier. But so they had heart for these people. So when the kids came in, they really knew what they were talking about. And that's how the industry grew. It was from the heart and passion of the people that spread it through the player. And the new yep. players generated and generated. So, hey, yeah. real quick, we got Damon Fowler watching, you know, Gator Melee. Yeah. Uh -huh. he's good, cool. I, I talk about an innovator, huh? Yeah. And man. I, I want to mention real quick, too, I um, August 3rd. August 3rd and 4th, he's having a, a Outdoor Extreme, and uh, it's at Western, I guess, uh, up in New York. And um, it's going to be uh, Area 53 is what it's called. So oh, what's that? Be, uh, is, he doing that? is he doing that at Angelica at that OXCC? Uh, good question. Uh, Damon, you're watching. Uh, I know it's, it's called Area 53, and I know it's August 3rd and 4th because I mention it yeah. every week. That's the Brian at, Barnold Field in Angelica, New York, I think. Outdoor Extreme, yeah. Yeah. It's oh, called Outdoor Extreme. It's in uh Angelica, New York. Could be. Oh. I got I got Nello, New York, but that could be my writing too. I might yeah. be wrong. But... but anyhow, you know, it and and you know, anything Damon gets in, it hooked up with is cool. You know, he he's like Dan and Bud and, and Kevin and all these other guys that to take and make stuff, you know, they, they make it, they make it right. They make it cool. And so anyhow, he's uh, kind of hooked up with this. So Gator Melee, if you guys get a chance, um, you know, get online and you get a hold of Damon, find out, but it's uh, an outdoor York, extreme Damon. August 3rd and 4th. I wear that stuff. You know, he made me a thing for my, for my mask. And I got to tell you something, that thing works great. They work fantastic, especially if you're taking point and you're taking a lot of fire. Okay. Well, it's great for a rep. For yeah, every, every, yeah. every rep, X ball rep should be should have that. It's you know, great and, for yeah. anybody. You yeah. Know? And, Man, you that know, protects your neck and your Adam's apple and shit. Every ref, every referee that actually gets in the shit should have that. A hundred percent. Absolutely 100%. right. And you know, he, he put something together. Those little rings are put together separately. It's all by hand. The guy's quite. I, I would go blind. Trying to do yeah. that shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's incredible. It really, really is. But yeah. Damon, you're watching. You're a good man. Um, you is. know, I hope I hope you get a lot of people. That's uh, August third and fourth, and it is at Outdoor Extreme, and it's in Western New York, someplace. Uh, so you get a chance, everybody well, get like online. Central, we'll support them. Like good Central guy. Adirondacks area, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it's like. Bumblefuck, New York. <laughs> now, come on. Tell me how you feel. Well, that's what it is, you know? <laughs> wow. I love it. Yeah, here we go. It said there's a, there's a different Gator Melee product for everything. Yep. Hand, neither. Yeah, i seen that they're making them for all kinds of things now, so that's pretty cool. You got to love it. All there is to it. All right, guys. Well, you know what? You know, I appreciate everybody hanging in here tonight. And I know we broadcast out there, but I'll be damned if I know where. But, huh. you know, <laughs> we had all kinds of people watching off and on. I thought that was pretty cool. I will try to get this figured out by, uh, oh, here we go. It's at the old GRC in Angie. Yeah, you were right, Kev. Well, the Bumblefuck New York. Yeah, you get a chance, you guys can want to go out and see it. You know, if Damien's involved, I think it's a good thing because, you know, I I, I think Damien's very, very good for the sport of paintball. He's one of the guys that I would push all the way. I think he's absolutely terrific. So if you get a chance, you know, uh, jump on, get a hold of Damien, find out the specifics on it. And like I say, it is called uh, just Outdoor Extreme. You know, get on, get on and check it out. And if you get a chance, 
like I say, a lot of these things, people, even if you don't play, just like Kevin's tournament coming up, even if you don't go play, go out and support it. Because, you know, it's like anything else. You see a crowd, you're like, wow, what's going on? You're going to go check it out and maybe get interested in it. So, you know, the more crowds we draw, even if you're not playing, the more people you're going to draw in. To yeah, check come it. and hang out and party with everybody. Yeah, Absolutely but you right. know, something too, it's a historical thing, too. I mean, it's really one of those things like a bucket, like I said, a bucket list. I mean, you can go to all kinds of fields until you hit that field, man. You owe it to yourself if you're a paintballer to get a couple guys together, create a team, and get out there and play some paintball into one of the original fields, the original field, and it's badass. I mean, I've <laughs> enjoyed the hell out of it, and I'm looking forward to going there. And if these guys ever want to do something really badass in the original, they ought to put a squad together and get out there and play some ball over at your field, man. You know, right. it's a great, great field and should make it before, before, before it goes away. I mean, yep. I think life expectancy. So yeah. I hope they come out there and play Kevin. All right, my brother. Well, all right, everybody. Well, um, Danny, I appreciate you Ready? sticking with me tonight on this, buddy. Great, you, know, man. You, you stuck with me for 30 some years through all kinds of stuff. We'll be here for another 36, too. Uh, uh, let's hope, huh? <laughs> yeah, let's hope. <laughs> yeah, right uh, on, brother. Good seeing you. Same thing, Freddie. Good seeing you guys. And uh, Danny, we'll great to seeing you, my man. Good seeing you. We'll catch up with you guys. You bet. Right, Give Barry. Mary a hug for me, will you? Same, same, Sherry. Same, say, same, yeah, same. Say hello to John will, for me, brother. too. I will. All right, brother. All right, man. Bye bye. We'll later. Bye bye. What a great guy, huh? Awesome and guy. I, I love that guy. God, you know, there, there's, a, you know, there's a few people in this industry I absolutely love, you know, but I could count them on one hand. That's the bad part. So, but there's a lot of people I like. So, Kevin, I appreciate you sticking with me tonight going through this. You know, I'm going to get it worked out by next week. I just yeah. want your tournament to be terrific. Um, so you know, I. you've been around for a long time. I've never... Anybody that's ever played out there at your tournament, I've never heard a bad word. It's always been positive, positive, positive. And I would rather have 10 teams have a great time than I would a million teams bitch about this and that and everything else. So. That's exactly how I feel. That, you know, that's, that's, that's what it's about, Freddie. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you sticking with me tonight. I'm going to get this straightened out by next week, uh, but I appreciate everything, Kevin. Well, thanks for having me on, Fred. I appreciate it, man. Well, we've been buddies a long time. We're going to stay buddies oh, till the end. So That's for sure. Yep. That's right on, for Kevin. sure. All right. Stay Thank safe. Thank you, Freddie. You Have a good give night. Wendy a give Wendy a hug for me. Give Sherry a hug for me, my friend. Done deal, brother. All right. Bye-bye. you, Fred. Bye. Mr. Kevin Donaldson, everybody, one of the, the greats in this sport. Well, everybody, you know, I got to tell you, I appreciate everybody hanging in here tonight. You know, I don't know. I, first of all, I got an eye problem. I got waxed. So I, my eye is uh, still kind of out of focus. But I appreciate everybody taking the time to jump on tonight. Again, I apologize for it not going through on flagpole. I hope to get that straightened out this week. I'm going to get some computer help and find out exactly what happened. And uh, maybe I can put this thing all back together again. But, you know, I really do appreciate you watching. I appreciate the new people watching. Um, RJ, get a hold of me. I'd like to put you on and, and, you know, sit and talk some paintball. That's what it's all about is just talking paintball and having a good time. So until next Tuesday evening, hopefully on Flagpole Production, please, everybody, play hard, play safe, play fair. Get out there and play some paintball, okay? All right. Bye now.